Hello everyone and welcome. In this recording, I would just like to offer a few words of guidance with the present energies, because not only are we in a pre-eclipse period, the eclipse taking place on the 14th of October, and after then, the 28th of October, but we also have very strong alignments in the sky that have a massive impact on our psyches, on our mental sphere, on our emotions, and basically even the fated events that are playing out in our lives individually, and as we all can observe collectively as well. Now, I would like to begin with perhaps the most important energy, which is Pluto, who very, very recently on the 10th of October went direct. Now, Pluto isn't moving all that much direct yet, but it doesn't really matter because its symbolism is greatly amplified and usually its shadow expression is highlighted because it's still basically standing still. So before it starts picking up speed, Pluto is going to have this quality to it. Now, if you remember me and almost every astrologer out there around 2020, before the meeting of Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn on the 12th of January, uh, spoke that this Plutonian activity and Pluto finishing its job in the sign of Capricorn is going to be a pivotal moment for all of us and you know for the world in a collective sense. And this is perhaps the final moment when that huge energy shift, when that big world change is at least the Plutonian, the Capricornian part is finished, is going to be finished. So Pluto will exit the sign of Capricorn on uh, around January 2024, the beginning of January. So this is the final window of opportunity when it acts like the wrecking ball. It demolishes the old order by revealing everything that's faulty, everything that is corrupt, everything that is really not aligned with morals and ethical and legal standards. And Capricorn is government, top-down authority, big corporations, big institutions, the international world, banking, all of that. And we very well see how it is playing out, especially in this present moment in different parts of the world quite violently and quite intensely. So this is something that, you know, we do need to embrace. We do need to embrace the truth that Pluto is revealing to us. Now, of course, not the violence, not the sacrifice not all the suffering that goes in a way hand in hand with this, but the truth of what Pluto reveals, that is something that we really, really need to basically crystallize in our awareness so that this can never, ever repeat again. The other energy which is quite significant is Pluto's lower octave Mars, who has very, very recently entered in its ancient ruling sign of Scorpio. Now this adds a totally different kind of intensity. Mars is our will, Mars is our action, our initiative, courage, everything that has to do with inner fire. So being in the sign of Scorpio makes it really, really intense. Now, just a day ago, it was in the sign of Libra. And as we all know, in Libra, Mars is not able to bring out its higher qualities, because it has to take into consideration the situations, the feelings, the perspective of another, whatever that other is. In the sign of Scorpio, how, however, it is super concentrated on the goal. It is maximum focus, maximum intensity. No, almost like a drill, just drilling in that point where it is inserted. There is no stopping to it, and it can go to any depths. So this is where we have a very, very powerful Mars, which means business. Now, individually speaking, we do feel that as a strong sense of urgency to get somewhere with our situation, with our needs that are not fulfilled, with our project, with our dreams, with our relationship, 
contracts, jobs, you know, wherever that Scorpio is in our personal uh, life, whichever area of our chart it falls into. But we can also just feel this collectively without, you know, individualizing it. We feel the urgent need to make prog progress, to go do it, to be it, to start taking empowered action. Now, of course, this in a sense is very positive because we all need this. But at the same time, this can be a little bit way too intense because Mars also rules the sign of Aries where the North Node is our collective path forward, the collective karma in a progressive sense. Now, this North Node in Aries is conjunct Eris, goddess of discord, Mars's sister in mythology. So she adds a um, greater deal of intensity to this. She is basically uh, awakening of our inner warrior who wants to fight for independence, who wants to fight for sovereignty, and who wants to fight for everything that represents our dreams for and goals and everything that we need for the future. And if this wasn't enough, both this Eris and the North Node is also conjunct White Moon Selena, which isn't a planet. It is just an astrological point of calculation, but she represents basically the highest octaves of our soul, the most beneficial uh, desire that our soul has. So how very important the energies seem in the present and they feel in the present moment. So this adds a lot, a lot of psychological pressure on us, especially that a lot of the other planets are, the big planets are still retrograde. So that means we cannot progress and move forward as quickly as we desire. So this immediately creates an inner frustration. And this frustration, this sense of powerlessness, perhaps, even if it's a dichotomy, because Pluto in Scorpio is definitely power. And sorry, Mars in Scorpio is definitely power. And Pluto in the sign of Capricorn, exactly who holds the power? Yet, if karma and, you know, our setup is not permissive of very quick progress right now, you can imagine how that great power and intensity due to par Mars and Pluto are going to feel like a frustration. According to Freud, frustration and, you know, depression is nothing more but repressed anger, an anger that we simply cannot express. So all of us may be feeling this one way or another. Now, if that wasn't enough, the eclipse is also being set up. So we do have that Libra somewhere in our charts. And it does rule relationships, contracts, alliances, one-on-one -on -one negotiations, decisions, what's best and what's worse, what is right and wrong. And of course, what does the mind want and what does the heart want? And these two usually should be in equilibrium or in um, clear, you know, where the skills of justice show something, determine something clear in order for us to make a really wise and safe and sound decision. And even in the present moment, that is a little bit difficult because as we speak, Mercury, planet of the mind and communication in Libra is perfectly conjunct asteroid palace athena so wisdom tactics what it is that would be the right choice so in various things in our life we have a big question mark even though we are figuring it out but the way we are figuring it out is a little bit difficult as well because we have venus conjunct black moon lilith in the sign of virgo black moon lilith freshly and oh, venus as well freshly entered there opposing Saturn in Pisces. Now, Saturn is the symbol of structure. So all of us are building something, work in, building in progress, so to speak. And this alignment acts like, you know, when there's a building and let's say it's 25% or 50% or whatever complete, there has to come an inspection to make sure that everything is up to standards and going well, and there is no hidden danger. Now, this might be the case 
because Saturn is real and concrete, but in the fantasistic, idealistic, spiritual, ethereal, if you will, sign of Pisces. And that represents our hopes. That represents the big dream. The, And when I say hope, it's not the Aquarian hope, a principle, an idea which we want to follow, but exactly our faith kind of hope. What it is that we hope for, how we hope that certain plays and certain things in our lives play out, in which manner, in which dynamics. So that is the symbolism of Saturn in Pisces. Our hopes, our fantasies, our you no know, aspiration, but from a more spiritual and psychological sense, where do they stand? Opposing Venus in the sign of Virgo, that is how well it is possible for our dreams and whatever we hope for, strive for, work for, sacrifice for, Saturn rules all of that, how well can they be executed? Or how real are they? This is the reality check. Venus is planet of, you know, worth. May it be self-worth, worth in love, money, finances, our own you know, internal configuration of our feeling is something worth our time, worth our sacrifice, worth us riding, navigating, surfing the dream and the hope and the magic and the psychological fortitude that we invest into it. So this is a pretty tough reality check because we see the measure in our lives how far we come with our dreams or whatever we're building or sacrificing for and how well does it serve us? What it is that we need to change because we must not forget that Black Moon Lilith is also there. And if that wasn't enough, Juno, planetoid of, uh, sorry, asteroid of partnerships. So again, any kind of partnership and alliance holds an in conjunction of quincunx with Pluto. So again, how much power, control, how much influence do partnerships have upon us? So this isn't a very easy period because we have to make choices. We have to think and see and even feel clearly. Of course, Venus in Virgo helps us feel clearly because in that sign, she's the most down to her itself she is not very strong because she cannot be as idealistic and romantic and you know loving as in the sign of pisces but she is very anchored in in reality let's say that which makes common sense and is is rooted in something solid concrete and real so we but of course with this energy it's an opposition so neither Saturn and Pisces hold the ultimate truth, neither Venus and Black Lilith and Virgo. The truth is in the middle. This is where it will show us to which extent we can sacrifice, to which extent we can hope, to which extent are our hopes, faith and fantasy, and even the magic and the alchemy, the result of our faith, in which extent are they real? In which extent can they actually do something in our lives? And what would be wasted energy or a delusion? So this aspect really, really challenges uh, the present dynamics in our lives. And if this wasn't enough, uh, and I have to look at the chart in order to tell you precisely, absolutely, the sun holds a uh, half square with Venus. Now, the sun is in Libra, so this may represent fr great frustration from our contracts, partnerships, alliances, or the dynamics of justice and fairness in our lives. We are irritated because it's not ideal or we cannot see the right option yet, as of yet. But at the same time, Venus holds a square and a half, so sesquis quadrant with a uh, Chiron, so our wounds and the wounding. What do we do with our wounding in that sense? In which way are our lives and relationships, financially speaking, Venus and Virgo, 
uh, tactics wise, Mercury conjunct Pallas Athena, and the dynamic wise, in which way can they wound this minimally? In which, what is the most ideal configuration in our lives for us to heal or for our wounds not to be triggered? So this is where uh, this square and a half, so sesqui quadra quadrat, sorry, is actually reminding us of all the moments when, for example, with Venus and Virgo, when we risked, when we took risk, and it didn't play out in a very good way, when our risks, when our initiation, when our wishful thinking failed. So these thoughts and these feelings, these memories might also be bombarding us in the present moment. So this is really not an easy, and also, Jupiter from Taurus holds a quincunx with um, Mercury and the sign of Libra. Again, what is the right choice? What is fair? What is our truth? Or even if we know what our truth is, how can that be expressed in a way that doesn't wound anyone, for example? Of course, there is everything that is playing out on the world stage the horrible conflicts, the wars, but those go hand in hand with the eclipse. As I said in previous recordings, this is where old alliances, old uh, diplomatic agreements are being released, are changing. Old wounds, old conflicts, old anything that has to do with violent moments in history, are being evoked, are being recalled. And you can see that the conflict just escalates and enacts itself once more. Now, even though all of this is really negative and scary, and it does depict a valid picture of how much can we trust our leaders, because rest assured that no war and no conflict is initiated by the people. So, you know what I mean? So on one hand, it reflects who leads us. And, you know, us tolerating, and this from a very karmic and almost like spiritual perspective, if we tolerate everything that our leaders want to do without any challenge, we are part of their karma. We are the helpers, if you know what I mean. We put them there or we tolerated them there so we also have our fair share deal of the karmic balancing that will need to take place. But of course, it's not us personally, but our children, the children of our children, etc. So this is the karmic heritage that indirectly we are leaving to our children. But on the, at the same time, it is the eclipse, the moment of reset. Maybe the conflicts, the wars, the tension, the violence, it's escalating. It's like flaring up for a resolution because this eclipse in Libra is quincunx by Uranus. So surprise, surprise, expect the unexpected. It can also lead to a certain kind of peace. It can also lead to a certain kind of agreement, maybe out of sheer necessity or maybe because something else much more challenging than the conflict will arise in the world but it has a chance to lead to a resolution and peace. But, you know, the lesson of it, whatever this needs to reveal for all of us, well, that's definitely Pluto in Capricorn, where this is the last moment in our lifetimes when we catch this energy, the strength of Pluto in the earthly sign of Capricorn. It is actually dishing out the truth of how leadership, how politics and how top-down authority really work and in which way they can never, ever change. So all of us, especially collectively speaking, have to draw our own conclusions. Now, because this period is so tensionate, it is so difficult, my advice and my guidance is that we need to drop into our heart sphere, into, our, into the seat of our heart, because that is where 
we find our own personal ultimate truth. The mind is simply just an organ which helps us interpret and navigate reality. The mind, especially from a spiritual perspective, or better said, from an ethereal perspective, when we no longer have physical bodies, the mind is really not all that much, yet the heart is very much immortal. So that is where we need to ask ourselves what our true desire is, what our true preference is, what our true dreams are, and what it is that we love, and what it is that we wish to love, North Node in Aries, of course. And, of course, the heart alone cannot give us all the answers that we need, because we also need to put the mind on the other side of the scale for us to be able to interpret what our heart wants for us to give it a shape, a form, an expression, and an understanding that we owe ourselves. So this is how we need to reflect, drop into our heart space, and then consult the mind. How would you translate what the heart feels? And that is a much safe, and of course, with this Venus in Virgo, whatever practically, like, financially, the reaction of people, partners, boyfriend, girlfriend, crush, reaction of boss, reaction of work, whatever is one-on-one -on -one alliance or contract or choice, whatever physical reality reflects to us, we have to take that into consideration because there is a touch of reality and it will give us at least a glimpse of what we can expect and in which measure and what it is that we simply cannot expect because it's not happening. May it be emotional things or very practical things. So if you are having problem making important choices, or if you're lost and confused and you feel this energy simply overwhelming you, all you can do right now is really just drop into your heart, take a deep breath and ask yourself what it is that you truly would like to feel and experience what does your heart say to you what is the voice of your heart because sometimes that is the only truth that we can actually work with thank you everyone for listening i really hope that this was at least a tiny bit felt helpful and i'm wishing everyone strength and love and fortitude in these very challenging times until next time bye for now